guys, and Name is back again. I'm gonna make this a real short uh, intro, real quick, into what I'm doing right now. Obviously, you can see I'm playing the uh, the Stanley Par Parable, Parable, whatever it's called. Looked like an interesting game, so I figured uh, I would try it. I mean, the the previews and the um gameplay looked. I don't know. It just looked very interesting and intriguing to me. But uh, I'm gonna be trying a new format today. Uh, tonight, I guess I should say, um, I'm going to be doing just straight up 10, 10 minutes of gameplay, uh, edit it very lightly, post it, and see how that goes, because I, so far I've tried Let's Play Format and Highlight Reel Format, and both are really good, they're kind of time consuming, uh, real announcement real quick, is I got new speakers, and it's, I don't know if it is affecting my microphone at all, it may have just been what I heard through my speakers when I, when I tested, um, I should be getting a new headset here in maybe a week or two, and uh, hopefully that will increase my voice quality immensely. It's it's an eight dollar Razer headset, so I'm hoping it's much better than this twenty dollar Logitech headset. So let's let's get into this game. Let's see what uh what we can do. <coughs> the end is never low. Yeah, I don't know. This game seemed very, uh, very intriguing. Oh, and I, uh, <coughs> I hope to not be coughing throughout this entire video and sniffling, but I, uh, I just cleaned my room and, gee, oh my, there was quite a bit of dust. So, um, I might be <coughs> lightly coughing and sniffling through this video. I'll try to edit the sound so it's, uh, so it's not so loud and pronounced, but, uh, hopefully, hopefully I, it just cuts out on its own. Um, I guess while it's loading, I got my, I got a new, I got almost a new getup. I have a new Razer mouse, I have a mouse, a nice mouse pad now, I've got a Logic, Logitech speakers, I'm about to get a Razer headset. The only thing I have not upgraded recently is my keyboard, and hopefully sometime I can get that upgraded, <coughs> and I will, I want to get a, I want to get a webcam so I can start face camming on Twitch. Um, this is the story of a man named listen. Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee <coughs> 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every soul. moment that the orders came in. As though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had come <coughs> up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't know if I'm being obvious about this, but I really want to see if the, uh, the narrator says something about me exiting my office. Um, I don't know how long I have to be in here though. I won't wait too long because, like I said, I'm only trying to do a 10 minute straight stream. Uh, uh oh. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go anywhere except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. 
Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Oh god. Okay. That actually scared me. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, this game. For real? This is like, oh god, this breaks the fourth wall to all hell. I don't know, man. This is... This is a... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Let's see. I don't even know what a meeting room is, so... I wouldn't... I wouldn't know. Is there... Where's the meeting room? Is this a meeting room? No. That's not the meeting room. Yeah, that's probably not the meeting room. Oh, okay, whatever. Let's, uh... Let's go to where the meeting room is. Okay, sort of here. Um. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Uh, you can look a scrotum. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Hmm. I don't know, where is the employee lounge? Is this it? No, that's not it. Okay, whatever. Oh. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Oh, okay, now I'll go now. But eager to get back to business, hmm. Stanley took the first open door on his left. Should I listen? I'm really... No. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, dog. I got you next time, though. I got you next time. I promise, dog. I got you. My bro. Because I don't want you to scare me. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it's in motion. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I, I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, later, but the fuckers. fact is that the story... But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> yes! Ye oh, okay, God, this freaking ground-breaking... Oh, fourth wall. Breaking. All of his co-workers were gone. Okay, yeah, right. What could it mean? Okay, Stanley I, decided I to go to the meeting. I got you next Perhaps time. he had simply missed a memo. Now. I got you. Uh, oh yeah, this way. Uh, okay. We're going left. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, that's really bright out there. What the... Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> I really like this. this. What is this? Oh, using slides to assure employees that enemies. <laughs> I really like this. This game. You most of all. Huh. Wow. They just took the same model and kinda... Wow. <laughs> I really like this game. I'm, I'm really like it. Well, let's let's go farther because I don't want to waste all the time exploring. Broom closet? Ooh. Huh. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. Yeah, I got you, dude. I'll listen this time. I won't listen next time. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Sorry, dog. I'm going now. Oh, red. 
bit scary. I don't like this. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. <laughs> All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. That's pretty cool. I like this. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical oh. star field. And it too appeared. Wow. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, oh, no. and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job all I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. What the hell? Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real, I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. God, I don't know how to take this game. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place Whoa, of work. What? But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. 
and although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like, and in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what wow. isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Why doesn't she listen to the voice? Alright guys, well, um... That's all, that's all I have time for. I, I really, I want to play this more. But uh, I'm going to stick to the format for now. Um, maybe tomorrow, or um... Maybe a couple days from now, I don't know. I think I will, uh, I think I'll get back into this, and um... I hate to say it, but uh... I can't let you guys see the whole thing. That'd be a line. No, I might as well just go back to Let's Play then. So, um, if, uh, if any of you actually do watch my videos continuously and have been keeping up with me, uh, keep me up to date on what format you prefer, what you think I should do, um, and I will, I will, uh, listen to you guys and see, see what the best course of action is. This game's really interesting, uh, I, w I would definitely recommend it, but, um, Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, comment, subscribe, like if you want. And I will see you guys probably tomorrow. Alright? Take it easy.